Hello, welcome to today's machine learning class. In this tutorial video, we are going to learn how to use machine learning model K nearest neighbor to predict the quality of the wine. So let's first take a look at the data set. The data set look like this. So we have several columns like the fixed acidity, volatile acidity, and these are the chemicals of to describe the quality of the wine. And the last column quality represent the uh, label that you're going to predict. Uh, the higher the value will be and the better quality of the wine. Okay, so we are going to learn how to uh, build a K-News neighbor in Python and predict the quality of the wine. So let's go back to the collab. So first we are going to import some libraries. So first we're going to import pandas and we're going to import um, scikit-learn dot pre-processing. Uh, this library help us to uh, do the data engineering. Uh, actually, this is from port standard scalar. Okay, we're going to standardize those features or normalize these features. And after we do the data engineering, we're going to do the uh, train test split. So from scikit-learn.model selection, import train test split. So this library help us to split the training test and the testing data set. And we're going to uh, import learn dot neighbors because these is for the model building because we want to build a Kenyan's neighbor to do the classification. Okay, we're gonna import K K neighbor classifier. Okay, once you have a model built, we're gonna evaluate model. So this short tutorial video, we're gonna first um, take a look at the accuracy. In the future uh, video, we will, we will learn how to do more evaluation metrics like the act measure, position, record, and uh, etc. AUC, okay, so this we're gonna uh, just simply look at the accuracy. So we're gonna import accuracy score. So first, this is for data building. Uh, this is for the data uploading. This is for feature engineering. And this for train test split. And this is for the model building. And the last one is for model evaluation. Okay, let's run the sale. And we're gonna import the data set. So from the content, we're gonna upload um, wine quality. Okay, this is a public data set. Okay, so now you can see that the wine quality is under the folder content. So we can directly use DF, define a DF data frame that equal to PD dot read CSV. And our file name is wine quality dot CSV. Uh, you can download this data set for exercise in the link below. Okay, so this is our data set. Okay, we load the data set and use head to take a look at the first five rows of the data set. So this is exactly uh, identical to the slides showed in previously. Okay, so the first column is fixed acidity all the way to sulfates, alcohol, and the last one is quality. So let's take a look at the data set. So first we're going to use df.shape to explore the shapes of data set. So in this data set we have 1,599 bottles of the wine and we have 12 columns, okay? So the last column is quality and all of the features including the fixed acidity all the way to the alcohol. So let's take a look at the uh, quality, how quality is distributed over the entire data set. So we can simply put DF uh, quality. This is our target variable. So we're gonna use value counts. 
Okay, so this is a very simple way to take a look at the distribution of the quality. Okay, so from the results we learned, we know that the quality level five, six, seven, they are the most uh, proportion. They, they they are most wine quality of the wine in our data set, and eight seems like the highest quality. It only have eighty. 18 bottles, so it's really rare to have the highest quality of the wine. So you can see that the in terms of this quality, the label are not evenly distributed, and most of them are five or six or seven, and the rest for the four, uh, three and eight. Okay, so this is the uh, how quality is distributed, and now. Uh, take a look at the data set. So all of the data set seems like all of these features are numeric variables. So good thing is we don't have to uh, do the dummy variables. We can use all of these uh, values to, pr to predict the quality. However, if you take a look at uh, closely to, to the features, you can see that their skills are different. So for example, the total sulfur uh, dioxide uh, their value is around uh, 50 or 60, okay? So they're two-digit numbers. And if you take a look at the chlorides here, and they're 0 0.0 uh, to 0 0.05 or 0 0.08, etc. So these are different scales, right? And if you fit all of these var variables, all, all of these values to the a machine learning model and the machine learning model will you know driven uh, to those uh, variables like they have the highest value so we don't want that happen the simple way to uh, solve this issue is that we want to put all of these features into the same page we want to let all of these uh, numbers in the data set to be the same scale so that so in order to do that, we're going to use the uh, data normalization, or in this specific case, we're going to use a standardized technique to do the feature engineering. So in next, we're going to do this. We're going to mm, do the feature engineering. Specifically, we're going to standardize all the features. And all the features I mean are from the fixed acidity all the way to alcohol. So let's see how we do this. First, we're going to define scalar. Uh, scalar. And that equal to standard scalar. So we're going to use this function because this function helps us to uh, do the standardization for all of the features you uh, mentioned and then we're gonna specify which columns I should normalize so we're gonna use columns to normalize we're gonna define these variable and these variable include all the columns we want to normal uh, normalize in this data example we're gonna normalize fixed acidity volatile acidity all the way to the alcohol remember we cannot normalize Quality because quality is a target variable we want to predict, so we leave the quality as it is. So now, uh, columns normalize will be okay. We're we're gonna use this function df columns. So df columns will extract all of the columns in our data set. However, we need to specify we're gonna exclude the quality because the quality the last column. It, we should remove that, okay? So that means the columns is from 0 to 11, okay? So it's from fixed acidity all the way to alcohol. So let's take a look at columns to normalize to make sure they are correct, okay? So now you can see when, when we plot the columns to normalize, it is from the fixed acidity volatile acidity all the way to alcohol. So that is all the features we want to normalize. Okay, now next we're gonna rescale all of the variables in the original data set. So df 
columns to normalize. And this is how we update the original data frame so that the original data frames value, the features value, transforms into the standardized value. Okay, so we're going to use scalar. This is what we defined in the previous function. Uh, scalar dot fit transform. And inside of that, we're going to copy the column we want to update it from. Okay, so this is how we do the data normalization for the columns so that we want to normalize. Okay, next we're going to take a look at the data set. Okay, once you run the DF head, it will be the data frame that you updated from the original version. So this is the original version. Okay, once we run this cell, the DF will be the updated version. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So it works, right? The DF now is, you can see that all of the variables, uh, feature variables are standardized and these values are project into the same scale or same page, okay? However, the quality, the last column, the target variable is not changed. Okay, so this so far so good. We are ready for split, uh, extract the features and the label. Okay, so next we're going to uh, set up feature, features and label. Why? Because feature and label, will, we will uh, further use those two components to split the data into training and testing. Okay, so features will be DF. Remember here, the DF is updated version. This is this data frame. Okay, DF dot iLock. We're gonna select all of all of the rows and the columns uh, from fixed acidity to the alcohol. So this is the features. If you want to double check the feed whether the features is correct, you're gonna use the features dot hat. Okay, so seems like it is correct from the fixed acidity all the way to alcohol. Okay, so let's remove this one and the further we're going to extract the label. We're going to use df.iloc and we're going to use same uh, col sorry, colon here and minus one. Minus one represents the last column. Okay, and if you take a look at the label, you can use head as well. So this is the last column. Okay, so this is how we set up the features and the label. And now we are going to do the next step. We're going to split the data. Split the data into training and testing. Okay, this is how we build the model. Remember that the training data set is for the model building and the testing data set is for the model evaluation. Okay, so the training data set include train X and train Y. Test data set also include test, test X and text Y. Text X represents the features in the uh, training or testing data set. So we're going to say train X, uh, test X, train Y, test Y. Okay, so these are two components, train and the test. And in the, each component, it further split it, it split it into features and the target variable. Okay, we're going to use train test split function. And first, we're going to feed that with features. Okay, and then label. And then what is the training? Uh, what is the proportion of the training and the proportion of the testing? So we're going to use the test size equal to 0 0.1. That means we're going to specify the test data set represent 10% of the data set and the Python will automatically calculate the training data set will be 90%. And the last we're going to specify the random state. Random state. Random state is how we shuffle the data and each random state represent the different pattern for the uh, shuffling. Okay, let's take any number, let's use 12, and you can try use different integers like 8, 
uh, 42, etc. So each different random state will give you specific shuffling uh, pattern. Okay, now this is how we split the data and let's run the code. Okay, perfect. And the next we're gonna do the model building. Building and we're gonna use k nearest neighbor. So we're gonna define a model called model and we're gonna use k nearest neighbor classifier. And if you use this k nearest neighbor, you want to uh, specify what is a k. K represent how we want uh, how we voting, how we do the voting system to select the labels. For example, we're gonna set uh, n neighbors equal to five. So that means the k equal to five. And we're gonna use the model to train the data set, use fit function. Okay, when we train the model, we're gonna use the train x and the train y. So we put train x and train y because we're gonna use the uh, uh, training data set to model building and the testing data set for model evaluation. So let's run this cell and it works. It has, it, you have, if you have this blue box, that means your model is successfully trained. Okay, next, if we have the model, we can do the prediction. So let's use this model to predict, okay, to predict the testing data sets feature. Uh, okay, so predicted y equal to model dot predict. And we're gonna feed, we're gonna feed test x because we need all of these features to make prediction. Okay, so I'm gonna specify here model prediction. And you can take a look at what is model predicted by using this predicted y to uh, print it out the result. Okay, so given the test x, the features in the testing data set, the model predicted as follows, 666 six, six, represented the different levels of the y all the way to five. Okay, then you have the true label, right? The uh, ground truth label that is test y. Okay, so this is how uh, this is uh, how you want to compare your predicted value to the ground truth. So take a look at the first one. It seems like our model predict correctly in, the, in terms of the first one, but the last one, it didn't, right? The last one should be five, uh, sorry, the last one should be six, but our model predicted as five. So how we evaluate this model? We're gonna use the accuracy score. So take a look at the accuracy, model's accuracy. Remember the accuracy is in terms of the testing data set. So we're gonna uh, define a, a value called accuracy that equal to accuracy score. We're gonna use this function and then we're gonna put the test y, this is ground truth and the predicted y your model predicted, okay? So by using this function, Python will automatically compare the uh, ground truth with the predicted value and calculate the accuracy. And then you can take a look at the accuracy to see what is that result. Okay, so this result is uh, 56%. So that means by given the testing data set and the model you just built, the uh, accuracy for the testing data set is about 56%. Well, uh, it's uh, it's not that bad, consider this is unevenly distributed in terms of the labels, but in the future slides, we will learn how to uh, better interpret this uh, accuracy or any other evaluation matrix, and we will learn how to improve the accuracy by building other uh, more powerful machine learning models. Okay, so this is how we use machine learning model to predict the quality of the wine. And this exercise include the uh, data exploration, data engineering, and uh, model building, model evaluation, model prediction. 
Okay, I hope you enjoy today's video, and I will see you next one.